Hello, I'm Justine Green with the BBC News. The latest attempt at resolving the political crisis in Venezuela has gone underway in Mexico with a new round of talks between the opposition and representatives of President Nicolas Maduro's government. The US State Department said it hoped the talks would lay the foundation for a democratic outcome in Venezuela. Well, Grant reports. Both the Venezuelan government and the country's opposition arrived at the talks in Mexico City with certain demands. The opposition want to see a guarantee of free and fair elections, while the government seeks an easing of US sanctions. President Nicolas Maduro's government also wants the return of 31 tonnes of Venezuelan gold bars, currently held in the UK after the British government recognised opposition leader Juan Guaidó as interim president several years ago. The two sides have held talks in third countries before, and on each occasion they have collapsed. Venezuela and Colombia have confirmed they will open a humanitarian corridor on their shared border, which has been closed for over a year. Nearly 400 students from northwestern Venezuela will be able to cross into Colombia's Norte de Santander region on Saturday to pursue their studies there. On a visit to Louisiana, President Biden has praised the response to the damage caused by Hurricane Ida last Sunday, but he noted people's frustration at the delay in restoring power. More details from Nomia Iqbal in Washington. He turned up to basically say to people, the federal government has your back. In that particular area, it was in the west of New Orleans uh, where he visited. You know, people are without electricity. There's a lot of frustration at that, at the way it's been really slow in uh, trying to restore power. And he promised that uh, 25,000 uh, utility people will be drafted in to try and help with that. He also uh, promised people uh, money as well. We're talking about $100 million providing assistance, about $500 to individuals for basic Basic needs like food and clothes. Nomia Iqbal reporting there. The Taliban say they're advancing in the Panjshir Valley, where there's been fierce fighting against resistance forces in the only part of Afghanistan not under Taliban control. Resistance leaders have denied the claims. Here's Bashir Bakhtiar from the BBC's Afghan service. This evening, there was a lot of celebratory firing in Kabul. People woke up. I mean, there was a lot of heavy firing going on, light and heavy machine guns. People thought some local media had reported that Panjshir has fallen. But then it was denied by the people in Panjshir. Amrullah Saleh, the former vice president who is there, he released a video clip saying that, no, we are still here. We are holding up. We are in control of the situation. He said that, yeah, the Taliban have suffered casualties. We have suffered casualties, heavy fighting is going going on, but we have a grasp on the situation. You're listening to the latest world news from the BBC. The ride-hailing firms Uber and Lyft have said they'll cover the legal fees for any of their drivers who are sued under a restrictive new abortion law in the US state of Texas. The law encourages private citizens to sue anyone who helps a woman to get an abortion beyond six weeks of pregnancy. The CEO of Lyft, Logan Green, said the law threatened to punish drivers for getting people where they needed to go. Prosecutors in Guatemala have issued an arrest warrant for an anti-corruption lawyer who fled the country in July. Juan Francisco Sandoval crossed the border into El Salvador hours after being sacked by the Attorney General. Kat Wiener reports. During his time in office, Mr Sandoval played a key role in investigations which led to the jailing of the former president, Otto Perez Molina, for corruption, as well as charges against other senior officials. Guatemala's Attorney General said on Thursday that her office was now investigating possible criminal charges against Mr Sandoval for allegedly revealing confidential information. The arrest warrant was issued the same day Guatemala's highest court reversed a law that had prevented public servants convicted of corruption from avoiding prison sentences by paying a fine. The UN Children's Agency has warned that more than half a million children in southwestern Haiti are at risk of dangerous waterborne diseases following a series of natural disasters that hit the island last month. UNICEF's representative in Haiti said there was a real risk of a new outbreak of cholera, which has not been seen in Haiti for more than two years. The Reuters news agency has called on the Lebanese authorities to explain why they have deported one of its journalists last month. Reuters say Suleiman al-Khalidi, who's Jordanian, was detained and questioned on arrival at Beirut airport. It says officials demanded that Mr Khalidi hand over his laptop and mobile phone. When he refused, he was put on a flight back to Jordan. BBC News.